88. Yeah. 
now let's turn to hymn number 212. Number 212, since I have been redeemed. Number 212. coming, being here with us today, and we've got a lot to pray about at this hour even. Uh, if you've been watching the news at all, you know that uh, Israel is under a new attack from Iran, and uh, it's not just a terrorist attack, it's not just an action, it's war. And so Israel is formally and for all intents and purposes at war, not just with Hamas or Hezbollah, but with the nation of Iran. Uh, that's a big deal. And as we uh, call Israel our our friend, and um, we are one of the allies of Israel. That means that, are we at war? Uh, pretty much. So um, some of the attack, uh, some of the rockets and cruise missiles and the drones have been intercepted by American uh, utilities. And so, uh, wow, here we go. We've got a lot to pray about. And so we're going to go to the Lord in prayer here in just a moment. And uh, we do, I thank the Lord for our safety here today and the, the civility and the security that we get to enjoy. It's a blessing knowing that, uh, was anybody persecuted on your way to church today? <laughs> Neighbors not standing out saying, ah, where are you going with your Bible? None of that. No. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? We are a very blessed people. And we need to give thanks to the Lord. We're going to have our ushers come. If you fellows will come and take our offering today. And we're going to go ahead and ask the Lord to help and to, to uh, protect his nation of Israel. And to use and to bless us today. Let's pray. Lord, we ask you, uh, as humbly as we know how, Lord, we, you know today exactly what's taking place. And Lord, Iran is, they're marching in the streets and they're claiming victory in this attack of Israel we know today through the news and media sources that 1% of their ordinance has made it to Israeli soil. 1%. Lord, you have greatly protected and provided for uh, the nation of Israel. That, that little scratch of land in the middle of all these 
these ominous and, and threatening nations. And dear Lord, you said this was going to happen. You said, Lord, that despised among the nations of the world, that, that uh, your people Israel would suffer persecution. And Lord, we know today that they have still, as of yet, they have still rejected the Son of God who came to die for their sins. But Lord, through that rejection, the door of opportunity has been opened to us, the Gentiles, to be accepted in to that root of David. Lord, we thank you for allowing us today to claim the name of Christ and to be considered, Lord, to be called the people of God. We ask you today, if you would bless and protect the nation of Israel, Lord, we want to see their salvation. We want to see them turn to you. And Lord, we ask you to protect and to provide for them today. I pray that you would help us today and bless this offering. Bless, uh, Lord, the activities of this hour. I pray that you would just go before us and just calm our hearts, Lord. Even activity right now in this room, I pray that you would calm it, you'd get a, you'd get control over it. And Lord, that we would just be able to worship you freely. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you. May be seated. Announcement time once again. I was afraid after last week I might have been replaced by the technology in the yeah. hallway now. Um, but if you haven't seen it yet, uh, announcements are displayed on the screen out in the hallway. So if I go a little too fast or you missed something or you didn't quite get it written down, be sure to check out the screen. There's also some information on there from our missionaries as well. 
Um, in the way of announcements, our Women's on the Adventure event is scheduled for Tuesday, April 23rd. Ladies, you'll leave the church at 9.30 for Sheila's Garden Market in Galva. There will be a Dutch treat lunch to follow. Mother's Day Banquet is coming up on Monday, May 13th at 6.30. This, there will be a catered meal, a guest speaker, and it, it will be here at the church also. I believe tickets are necessary for that from Mrs. Peterson. So tickets, there is no charge for those, but in order to keep track of how many people are going to be coming and such, uh, please make sure you get a ticket uh, from Mrs. Peterson. Talk to her for more information or Miss Angela as well. Um, also, I've been asked to let you know that, ladies, if you signed up to work in the nursery, that nursery schedule is available on the calendar that's out in the foyer on the table as well. Yeah. Also, with Miss Brittany's wedding coming up, uh, make sure you get uh, your RSVP in by May 15th. Uh, see Miss Sarah for further information on that. The QR code I know is working on the invite, but if you have other questions or need further information, please talk with Miss Sarah. And also, uh, be praying for our camp meeting that's coming up. That'll be scheduled for April 30th through May 2nd. So be in preparation, prepare yourselves, and pray that our church will be in preparation for that also. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you would take your handles one more time and stand, turn to hymn number 495. Take your handles again, turn to hymn number 495. Since Jesus came into my heart, before we sing that real quick, we sing happy birthday. It's Brandon's 33rd birthday today. Hey. We'll sing happy birthday to him and then we'll sing this last song here. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Man, let's turn to him number 495 since Jesus came into my heart. 495. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have lied in my soul for which long I have sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart.
ask me what I stand to sing, what glad tidings these lips bring. I proclaim to you one thing, there is a kingdom coming. Let this joyous anthem roll, stirring peace within each soul. His plan's in place, God's in control. There is a kingdom coming. Every wrong will be made right, and all that's faith will be made sight. In the shadows only light, there is a kingdom coming. Here amid these troubled times, evil plots. Ever hit the ground running and realize, man, I should have been at, I should have been running three hours ago. That's how this morning has been for me. Just, uh, we finished out, uh, again, thank you to those who came Friday and Saturday and got all the work done around here and what a blessing it is. Uh, church has been deep cleaned and we are ready to get ready for camp meeting. Notice how I said that? We're ready to get ready for camp meeting. We're not ready for camp meeting, but we're ready to get ready. And uh, thankful that we uh, have a lot of uh, many hands make light work. And so thanks again to all those who uh, came and pitched in. And there's still work to do. So pray for us as we uh, continue on and get those things going. So uh, we're going to release our super churchers at this time. Kiddos, I expect you to be on your best behavior back there for Miss Dawn. And I want to know what you learned. All right. So there will be a test. There will be a quiz. The rest of us are going to be in John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I want to say it's good to have the Willises back. They were out for a little while. It's good to have uh, Miss Dawn Corby back there and keep praying for her as she uh, navigates uh, this health journey that she's on. And I appreciate the fact that no matter what she's going through, she's always got a smile. That's a blessing. That's, uh, and you can only do that with the Lord. That's the only way to do that. And so we're thankful that uh, the joy of the Lord is our strength. Praise the Lord. John chapter 15. Let me put this out there. Nobody in their right mind enjoys being hated. Now, you may think, you may think you know of somebody that just relishes the angst of all the people around them. 
But that's not how God created them. In our, in our natural state, we all want to win friends and influence people, right? We all want to have friends. We want to be liked. We want to be popular, if you will. I was not a popular kid in school. Uh, my story in school was another word that had two P's in it. Not popular. Pimpled. Yeah. Some of y'all rode that bus to school, did you? Uh, that was my story. I was the awkward kid. I was the one that I had gray hair when I was 12 years old. Not this much, of course, but I was, uh, my high school, uh, I just didn't fit in. I was, I was good at art, and which made me even more weird, you know? But there were things that I know back in those days that kids even still today do that because they want to be popular, they want to be liked, they want to have friends. While we all enjoy having friends in the world, and we enjoy, admit it or not, accept it or not, you might say today, and some of you have already shaken your heads, no, I don't want to be popular. Deep down, we all want to be revered and respected. We want to be that person in the community where people drive by and they, they wave and say, Hey, hey, it's, 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 a good day to, it's a good day to wave at a good neighbor. You know, that kind of thing. We all want to be that guy. While we all want to have friends in the world, we cannot expect them to truly know what friendship is for us. This is going to be one of those weird challenges from God's word where and I'm praying about this I'm praying the Lord help this to come across in the right way because it's going to sound very negative it's going to sound very uh, Debbie Downer if you will it's going to sound depressing but it's what the Lord tells us today here's the thought and I I even felt convicted writing this on the slip that I gave brother Edwards to put on the live stream because it sounds so worldly, it sounds so carnal, but here's my thought today. Haters are going to hate. Haters are going to hate, and that's the world that we live in. If you found John chapter 15, we're going to read down verse number 17 through 25, um, and if you're able, if you will, would you stand with me? We'll reverence the reading of the word today. John chapter 15, verse number 17 starts out. Jesus says, these things I command you that you love one another. We could park right there for a good while. We're supposed to love each other, aren't we? And we can say as a whole, hey, I love y'all. I love you. Uh, you all were a great blessing to us this last week. My wife and I have eaten so good this last week. Wow! And like guilt-free. Okay, it would have been guilt-free if we stopped with one plate. <laughs> can you get too much of a good thing? Yes, you can. But y'all did that last week. You gave us a menu and the ingredients for that menu because I, I think you'll love us. That's a great... Every time we've made a meal, every time we, <laughs> we, every time my wife has made a meal this last week, it's been made with love because somebody went through that, that ingredient list and picked out things and measured out a teaspoon of salt and put it in a container. Just a teaspoon. I mean, that's, it's, we've seen love. All, mm, we've seen love all week long. But Jesus saw fit right here to say, hey, these things I command you that you love one another. Why did he have to command us to do that? Because sometimes... Sometimes we just get fed up with each other. Sometimes we get full of each other. Sometimes, even within the relationships in this very room, right here at this moment, I know some of y'all have had it up to here with her or with him. I, that happens. But Jesus says, hey, these things I command you that you love one another. Verse 18, if the world hate you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because you're not of the world, but I've chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. 
Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, hey, they will also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they will keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. He that hateth me hateth my father also. If I had not done among them the works which none other man did, they had not had sin. But now have they both seen and hated both me and my father. But this cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled that's written in their law. They hated me without a cause. Can I put it this way? Haters are going to hate. We could go ahead and adopt the entire verbiage of the world and say it this way. Haters going to hate, right? Does that help you? Doesn't help me. That's bad grammar. Haters are just going to hate because that's what they do. We're going to see today, we're going to see why and what we can do about it. Would you pray with me? Lord, we thank you for your love for us. And Lord, it's that love that we crave. It's that love that, uh, Lord, that is our focus today. But we're going to take a moment here and focus, glance, we're going to glimpse at, uh, at an unsavory fact, the fact that the world hates us. I pray that you would help us, to, Lord, today. Keep us, from a, uh, keep us from an inferiority complex. Lord, keep us from uh, little man syndrome, from underdog syndrome. Lord, that's not what we're going for today. Lord, we want to see your truth, unashamed, unfiltered. We want to see the truth of your word and what, it, what, it, what place it needs to have in our lives. I pray that you would give us that today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you. you may be seated. We are at the, uh, at the moment, extended moment. We're trying to figure out our wireless microphones and all of that, so uh, I'll stay bound right here until I forget, and then I'll remember, and so... Hopefully this will this will suffice today, and we get that figured out. Uh, we talked last week, last couple of weeks, we talked about uh, no greater love. There's no greater love than a man would lay down his life for his friends. We talked about that from verse number 13. Last week we talked about the fact that there's no greater friend than that friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And we talked about some of those. Remarkable friends. I mentioned one name and you threw out the other. One of those was Laverne and Shirley. Absolutely. How about Mark and... Right. Tom and... Yes, yes, yes. Um, we could go... We could spend an entire hour doing that, you know. Uh, um, Smith and... Well, that's getting a little different. That's a little different. Uh, uh Gone beyond my years on that one. Tip and mitten. Tip and mitten. All right. That must have been before color TV. I don't know. Uh, Mutt and Jeff. Exactly. I always wondered about that one because my name's Jeff. And I was always looking around for Mutt. But Hey, here's the fact. We love to have friends. We sing the song, you've got a friend in me. We do watch the Toy Story movie with our grandkids, you know, and... And uh, we, we quote verses. They're, You're my friends if you do whatsoever I've commanded you. Verse number 14. But then the Lord says this to his apostles on this, on this trek from the upper room to the garden. His last set of instructions. And here we close out basically chapter 15. And he says this harsh reality. Hey, the world hates you. Isn't that exciting? It is a harsh reality. The world hates you. Hey, it's a fact. Children of God do not march to the drum of this world. Uh, we, uh, we live in this world, but we don't live for this world. We sing the song from the hymnal. I almost can't even sing it without tapping my toe. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I hear a banjo, you know. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. The angels beckon me from heaven's open door, and I can't feel at home in this world anymore. Give me a mandolin. I'm telling you, it's, it rings true. It's, this world is not our home. 
But oh, how we spend our lives to make this place comfortable. To make this place everything we've ever dreamed. A few years ago, I, my wife and I bought a zero-turn lawnmower for the house. We've got just under three acres to mow, and that, it's a good tool to have. I installed a 32-bulb LED light bar on that dude. It's got a cup holder. I'm t- we do everything we can. Think about the cars that we rode in today. Some of you have cars. I know the Kurtz's new car. It's got a camera function where somehow, magically, you can see the car from about 30 feet above it. You can stick your hand out the window, and on the screen you see your hand. I don't know. I mean, we've now got a video screen that's soon to take the place of Brother Andy as the announcement guy. No, that's not my intention. We do everything in this world to make this place comfortable, but yet we sing that song, This World's Not My Home. We're just passing through. If we're passing through, we're passing through real slow. Because we want our homes to be our castle, don't we? We want our homes. I don't know of any of us today that could live like some live over in the Middle East. Just to, living in their tent for a little while. And when the, when the winds come, they'll pick up and they'll move stakes like the old Native Americans used to do. The Indian folk. The original Americans. They were a transient people. They would wander nomadically across the plains and follow the herds of buffalo and deer and all of that. I'm thankful. Oh, I'm so thankful. I don't have to pick up the stakes of my teepee and take it anywhere. I know right where it is. 1094 Pawnee, right there by my goats. And my goats even have a nicer house than most of the people in the Middle East. But this world's not my home. Think about this. Jesus shows us a stark contrast. Verse number 17. These things I command you that you love one another. Christians are commanded to love one another. Uh, We're family, aren't we? In In this bond of faith, if you're a child of the king, if you've placed your salvation at the foot of Jesus, and you've trusted him for your eternal security, which starts not when you die, but starts right now. From this point forward, if you're saved, if you're a child of the king, you will never have to deal with death. Oh, your body will will wear out and it'll cease to be, but you'll keep on a clicking. We're commanded to love one another because we're family. We have the bond of blood. Not our natural blood, but supernatural blood. And that blood is thicker than water. Amen? Amen? That blood is our bond. There are something, uh, there is something today, something we all want to be a part. We want to belong, don't we? we? If you're here at this church today, even if you're maybe not a member, but you come regularly, it's like you belong here. Maybe you're here for the first time today, and hopefully we make you feel like you belong here because that's our job, that's our goal, to share the love of Christ with those around us. Yet this world's not our home. You know, there's something perverse in human nature that seeks to pick on or bully or, or, or ostracize one who's different than us. Have you ever seen that? Oh, yeah, we see. Look at the school ground. Look at the playground. The kid with the child with glasses. He's going to get picked on. Unless there are more children with glasses than there are without them. And then the ones without glasses are going to get picked on. It's like the majority wins. It's a majority rule kind of thing. We, uh, we, uh, there is something to being in the minority and being part of the majority. Teens in high school, we see this. I was that, as I mentioned, I was that weird teen that didn't go to parties. I didn't go to dances. I didn't even go to the substitute dances for the Christian camp. We didn't, we didn't do that. I wasn't allowed semantics I wasn't allowed to go to the movies pastor what do you mean did you go to the movies I wasn't allowed to 
Yeah. Some things that made me weird. And I got picked on for some of those things. We've seen that with our daughters as well. That's not fun, is it? But the contrast here is this. We're commanded to love one another. We should give each other support in this world that doesn't want us around. You've got a friend in me. We could preach the Proverbs of Woody today, I guess. We, this place should be home base right here today. This family gathering, this should not... This should not fill you with stress and anxiety. This should be where you can come and you can take a breath and you can relax and you can say, whew, made it through another week. Evolution says, no, it's the, it's the survival of the fittest. I grew up watching chickens in a chicken yard. And those chickens, when one of those chickens gets sick, what do the other chickens do? They pick on it. And as human beings, we think, oh, that's so cruel. We got we to gotta, we gotta stand up for that chicken. No, uh, that's just God's way of saying, hey, don't waste any grain on this old hen. She's fixing to go to the back of the barn. She's fixing to be done. That's not survival of the fittest. That's that's animal nature. That's, that's the nature that God has created. It's got, evolution has nothing to do with it. That's how, and it may seem cruel. It may sound harsh. I've seen, I've seen videos of uh, people being on African safari and watching a lion stocking up on a baby gazelle. And the people in that safari, in that, in, in that bus, uh, on the video, they holler out, No! No! And... Nature says, oh no, this is exactly the way God created this. This is supposed to happen. Yes, that baby gazelle's cute. Yes, it can't run and keep up with herd. Absolutely. But that's a lion. Think about that in regards to our spiritual nature in the, in the world. We see the world uh, maybe coming down and picking on a Christian. We see the, uh, the, the carnal uh, influence of a workforce putting pressure on a Christian, and we want to stand up and say, no, that's not fair, wait. But that's exactly the nature of the world. That's it. Yes, it's a stark contrast. Yes, we are to love one another. But look at this stern caution, verse 18. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. Jesus lays the foundation for the fact that the world will hate these apostles, these disciples, these followers of Christ, yea, us as well. Haters are going to hate. They hated Jesus first. Think about it. He's not yet been betrayed. Think about it now. Jesus, uh, I mean, Judas has gone to... to, to do his bidding with the Sanhedrin, the, with the priests and all of that. But the apostles don't know that. In fact, what do they know? They know that, whoo, they rode into town with a high hand, Jesus on the foal of an ass, and people laying down their coats and palm leaves and singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, praise his holy name. And Jesus says, hey, if the world hates you, they hated me first. The apostles might have said, but wait, 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 wait a minute. Just two, two days ago, just two days ago, do you remember that parade they gave us? I mean, that, that'd be anything that downtown Lindsborg's cooked up. I mean, that parade started at the outskirts of town all the way into town, and Jesus, they love you. Let me give you a, just a notice. The world may look like it loves God, The father of the world is the devil. And there's no love in the devil's life. There's no love in his heart for God or for the people of God. 1 John 5, 19. We know that we are of God and the whole world lieth in wickedness is what the Bible says. Isn't this just encouraging? 
All right, let's just take a moment and just bask in the positivity for a moment, right? Oh, it's so happy. It's so, it's so encouraging to think the world hates you. Yeah, the world hates you. It's a stark contrast. Hey, love one another. That stern caution, hey, the world's going to hate you. And here's a simple certainty. Look at verse 19. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. He tells them this simple certainty. Hey, the world hates you. They hate you. The world hates you. This is going to go out on our YouTube channel. And undoubtedly, there will be people not here, not part of us, and they will hear this dialogue and they'll read the, the text on the transcript and all that kind of stuff. And they'll say, oh, well, that, yeah, that, those are fundamentalists, by the way. They do believe what the Bible says. Yes, we do. Thank you very much. Amen. Yeah, and the Bible says the world's going to hate us. They're going to say, oh, no, we don't hate them. We do not hate them. If they'll just keep their message in that little log cabin and they'll keep to themselves and they'll do them and we'll do us. No, no, we See, there's the catch. They're fine with us as long as we stay out of their way. But we're commanded to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. When we get rejected by the world, it should not come as a surprise. Okay, When we get mistreated by the world, it should not be a shock to our system. When our heart is broken and our dreams are crushed underfoot... Let it be a reminder that this world is not our home, friend. Hey, we're just passing through just a little while. There is coming a day. I mean, we could go through half the songs in our new hymnal. And just the titles show proof of the fact that this world is not where we're going to end up. Mm -mm. Why do you think it was Lot's righteous spirit that was vexed by the wickedness around him? That should be our story, too. In fact, in Sunday school... Some of you parents are going to get uh, a shock when you get home and your young one pulls out the handout. And I've asked them to do that. Miss Andrew, I've asked them. And uh, Edwards says, I've asked Enoch. They're, they've been asked. Because we're handling some heavy topics. Today we talked about sexual immorality. <laughs> With teenagers. <laughs> yeah. Why is that important? Because the world has a way that it wants them to go. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. The end thereof are the ways of death. We talked about gonorrhea and syphilis and AIDS and pornography and lust. We talked about all those. Why would, pastor, why would you do that? Because this is the age. The world wants them. And I know, parents, you are already training them in that regard I just want to back up what you've already taught them. The certainty here is that the world hates us. The very last words of Jesus in this dialogue, look over chapter 16. The very last verse of chapter 16 is verse number 33. It's interesting. 33 was the age of Jesus when he uh, departed uh, this earth the first time. The first time. It says there in, in John 16, 33, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. Hey, in the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. He didn't say, be of good cheer. I think I'm planning, Lord willing, to overcome the... No, no, no. He said, I have overcome the world. As good as done. Hey, friend, don't sit here in this life and wring your hands and say, well... I hope it's all going to work out okay. I just don't know. We're not supposed to know. We know this. Greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Right. Absolutely. Now we're cooking. Here's a public service announcement. Ministry is not supposed to make you popular and celebrated among, among mankind. And I know ministry, many times we say the word ministry and you say, okay, so pastors and missionaries. No, 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 friend. If you're actively engaged in sharing your faith, you're in ministry. Yeah, you might be a welder. Yes, you might work at the factory. Yes, you may be a nurse or a health care provider. But if you're doing the work that God has given you to do, you're in ministry. 
One does not labor for Christ because it's fashionable or financially lucrative or generally fun. No, no, no. But in the end, it's all worth it. We serve because, as we looked last week, He has called us, He has chosen us, He has commanded us to go and bring forth fruit that our fruit should remain. That's what we studied last week. Faithful is He that calleth who also will do it. So the harsh reality today, the world hates you. Here is, uh, here's the reason. Look at verse 20 again. Remember the word that I said unto you, the servant's not greater than his Lord. If they persecuted me, they'll also persecute you. If they have kept my saying, they'll keep yours also. But all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because... They know not him that sent me. The harsh reality is the world hates us, but the reason is the world hates God. This world system today hates God. Jesus says the world's going to hate you because it hated me first. So who persecuted him, Jesus? Who persecuted him when he walked on this earth? Oh, it's those, it was those drug dealers coming across borders and selling fentanyl. Those are the ones that persecuted him. Nope. Nope, nope. Oh, I know what it was. The ones that persecuted him were the criminals. The tax cheats. The ones that persecuted him were the guys that were running around here and, and, and just doing whatever they wanted to do. No, that's not where the persecution came from. Who persecuted him in this world? The alarming fact of this hatred, it came most visibly from the religious crowd. Dump, dump, dum. Yeah, his persecution came from the religious folks. Those who were steeped in that system of religion. Think about it. The woman at the well. Jesus calls her out on her five husbands. Er, four husbands and one fella. He calls her out. And she goes into town and says, Hey, guys, come out and see a man that told me everything I ever did. She was astonished. She didn't go into town and say, Oh! This Jew at the well today, he really got my goat. I tell you, I'm, I'm, ugh. no, God, hey, she went and called people to come see Jesus with him, with her. Think about the maniac of Gadara, running and, and gnashing himself and basting, uh, blasting his arms with rocks and knocking his teeth out, running up on Jesus. Are you come to torment us before the time? And when the apostles came back, that man was seated and clothed. And actually ask Jesus, hey, wherever you lead, I'll go. Can I go with you? <laughs> what persecution there? Think about the centurion at the cross. Probably <laughs> spitting on Jesus. A uh, few things get my ire up. Like seeing somebody spit on another person. Mm -mm. Slap, okay. Punch, whatever. Spit, that's personal. They spit on Jesus at will. Probably this centurion at the foot of the cross. He may have had something to do with the scourge. He may have had something to do with knocking Jesus' feet out from underneath of him and, and having him trip along that, that, uh, that road. The Via Dolorosa. This man, this centurion at the base of the cross... He didn't finish that day and say, well, we sure had our way with that Jewish dog, didn't we? No, he said, took his hat off, surely, truly, this was the Son of God. There's no persecution there. Jesus flipped tables, not at Target. He flipped tables at the temple. Do you see the trend here? Where we would think there'd be the hottest persecution coming from the worst of the, uh, the individuals in the world, there's nothing but love and admiration and acceptance. But when Jesus healed on the Sabbath, those men from the temple came, hey, tell us who was it that healed you? Who was it that gave you sight? That's where the persecution came from. Judas was selling him not to hell's angels. Judas went down to the temple and was selling him out to the Sanhedrin. He wasn't going to, uh, to some, uh, some back 
Ali Bar and saying, hey, I need a group of guys to come and take Jesus. No, no. He went to the religious center of the day. Can we agree today? Here's a simple fact. As much of the devil, there's as much of the devil in false religion as there is in the crowd down at the bar today. Now, I'm not lifting up the drinkers and the druggers and the, and the divorcers and, and, and all that. I'm not lifting up the, 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 the simple man in the world that doesn't know any better, so he goes out and gets, gets stoned or gets drunk. I'm not lifting him up as, as, as someone of, uh, of moral character that we need to emulate. But let's not make a distinction when we're looking at those folks and looking at people in a church who look all nice and pretty, but deep down they're full of dead men's bones. That's the situation that we have here in the times of Jesus. Who persecuted him? Well, mostly the religious folks in his day. Well, who was it that sent him into this world? He said there in verse number 21, uh, uh, all these things will they do unto you for my name's sake, because they know not him that sent me. Who sent him? We know that John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. He gave Jesus that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, right next verse says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Because they hated God. They hated the one who sent Jesus. They went ahead and hated Jesus too. It's their sin. It's the exposure of their sin. He gives a part of the reason there. Verse number... Verse number 22. If I had not come and spoken unto them, they had not had sin. But now they have no cloak for their sin. There's no covering. You know what I like about church? Everybody comes together, and for the most part, we're not cussing. We're not, uh, we're not carousing. We're not fighting each other and all that kind of... We come to church, and we're on our best behavior. That's a blessing. And if you didn't come that way today, let me just encourage you. It's a good thing to come to church on our best behavior. Now... I want, to be, I want to be clear the way I'm saying what I'm saying next. You can come to church looking any old way you want to. Absolutely. You can come to church dressed just like you would go dressed to the, to the gym. That's, you're more than welcome to do that. I prefer to come ready to meet with the Lord. It's, it, it's amazing how amazing it is to see people in their natural habitat, say, at Walmart. Wow. Just wow. I mean, <laughs> if there are aliens <laughs> in space, they're probably looking at the Walmart parking lot and they're saying, wow, look at that one. Look at, look at that one. Would you look at that one? You know what I'm saying when I say that. It, it, hey, you didn't come to Smoky Valley Baptist Church today to buy a can of beans and toilet paper. You didn't come here. In fact, I was. I would let me encourage you. If you're one of those Walmart crazies that goes wearing wearing your PJs and all of that, you still carry the testimony of Christ even at Walmart. Even at Walmart. But you're not at Walmart. You're not at the grocery store. You're not at the gym. You're not at the pool. You're not uh, uh, out in the yard. You've come today into the sanctuary. We call this the sanctuary. It means it's sacred. There's, there's sanctimony here. It, it's, it's something special about meeting with the Lord. They hated Jesus because they hated the one that sent Jesus, God. It's their sin, the exposure of their sin. That motivates this hatred of God and God's Son. And friends, this is, this is why most people prefer a church that does not preach against sin. 
It's amazing. You look up interviews of popular uh, mega church pastors. It's it's heartbreaking what this world is being fed as truth from these supposed men of God. I'll never forget. It's been years back, I'm sure, but Oprah Winfrey asking uh, Joel Osteen. So tell me, Joel, are there many ways to God or just one? Well, Oprah, let me just tell you. I believe that the Muslim man who wants to get to God, he'll get to God his way. I believe that the Jewish man and the, the Mormon man, I believe we all go to God through the, through the standards of our faith. The Bible says there is one name given among men, given under heaven, whereby we must be saved. One name. That name is Jesus. That's the one that we're talking about today. Only one. Who persecuted him? Well, most of the religious folks, because... Who sent him? God. Isn't that weird that he got persecution from religious people? Uh, think about the story of Paul. Before he got saved and converted, he was a car thief, right? He was, he was organizing high crimes and financial... Er no. He was a Jew of the Jews. He was, he was one of the favorite sons of the religious system. Persecuting Christians. Guess what? They hated Jesus. They hated God. They're going to hate you. Verse 20, he says this little phrase, The servant's not greater than his Lord. Notice there the fact that that is lowercase l, Lord. That's not a reference to Jesus per, uh, uh, per se. It's a general reference to the, to the precept, to the, uh, to the premise that if you have a master, a lord, a boss, we're familiar with that term. If you have a boss, the servant, the employee, the, the one working, doing the job, he's not greater than his boss. I mean, that's kind of a, we all understand that, I think. We all get that premise. The servant's not greater than his lord. Hey, it's saying this, basically. If they persecuted Jesus... What makes you think that we're going to skate through life with no persecution? If they hated God, what makes you think that we, who bear the names of our God, the name of our God, what makes you think that we're going to skate through life and everybody in the world is going to come to our funeral and cry for eight days? Here's the thought. Don't say you represent God if you're not willing to bear the shame that comes with it. Don't say you're a child of the king if you're not willing to act and to conduct yourself and to speak and to look like a child of the king. We've got this idea, undercover Christians. I'm an undercover Christian. I, I, I kind of blend in with the world. I, I do the things the world does. And, and I'll go and sit at the bar and I'll drink because there might be somebody lost in that bar and I might get a chance to win them to the Lord. I'll never forget the story of a pastor who had a burden for people, he was in Las Vegas area. He had a burden for people that would go to the brothels and to the, uh, um, I don't even know what to properly call them, the, the, the nudie bars, the strip joint, whatever. I don't even know. It doesn't deserve a place in my vocabulary. I hope that's not weird to you. He had a burden for those people, and so he, would start, he started going to those places. This was not an independent Baptist pastor, by the way. It was, a, it was another stripe. But he started going to those places. And guess what happened? Yeah, ruined his marriage. He got caught up in that. And he, he became not a, uh, not a missionary to the brothels. He became, a, he became a client. If you've got an ox in the ditch, you're not going to get in the ditch to get the ox out. You've got to stay out of the ditch. We want the badge without the bruises. We want to say, oh, yep, I'm a child of the king. If you need anything, I can pray for you about anything. Just come to me. I'll help you with that. We want to do that, but on Saturday nights, Friday nights, maybe Tuesday nights, we want to kick in with the boys and go out with the girls, and we want to live that life. we got to put off former conversation concerning the flesh. Put that stuff off. Put on the new man. We want the finish line, but we don't want the fight. 
Jesus is saying here, the fight's coming to you. If you're truly a child of the king, if you're truly a child of God, the world hates you. Let's finish with this thought. The repercussion. The, uh, the harsh reality is the fact that the world hates you. The reason? Well, the reason is because they hated God first. But here's the repercussion. It's a simple verse. We read it. You might not have caught it. Verse number 25. This, but this cometh to pass. Stop right there. It says, but this cometh to pass. Jesus is telling the apostles, hey, all this, I know this is heavy. I know this is hard to hear. It's kind of a, it's kind of a, it's a bummer. But it's happening because of this. Because of what? This cometh to pass that the word might be fulfilled. It's written in their law. Here's the repercussion. Here's the bright spot in all of the fact that the world hates us. God called it. The Bible said it was going to happen. Well, what's the bright spot in that? The Bible said it was going to happen. And bing, it happens. God's word is true. God's word is absolutely true, friend. Psalm 69, verse number 4. They that hate me without a cause, David wrote, are more than the hairs of mine head. They that would destroy me, being mine enemies wrongfully, are mighty. David was writing, but that is, that is a prophecy. That's a foreshadowing of the testimony of Christ. They hated him without a cause. In the end, friend, this was all foretold and prophesied in God's word. This has all been planned out. Which of us, honestly, would admit to waking up this morning or maybe tomorrow morning? If this is your story, we need to talk. All right, this is my story, Pastor. Uh, tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to eat my Wheaties and I'm going to figure out how I can make the most people mad with the least effort. If that's your story... You need an oil change. In fact, you need a heart change. Because the child of God, that's not our testimony. That's not our goal. We don't wake up in the morning and think, all right, how am I going to offend everybody at work? No. That's not, our, that's not our goal. Psalm 35, listen to this. It says this. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with the eye that hate me without a cause. For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they open their mouth wide against me and said, Aha! Aha! Our eye hath seen it. Hey, there's a world around you waiting to watch you, Christian, and say, Up! Ah. Aha! We saw you do that. Ah, we heard that curse word. Ah, we saw you take that drink. Ah, oh, we, we saw you on the highway. You were speeding and you cut off that other guy. The world's waiting to say, aha, caught you. Think about it. Who could ever find a good reason to hate the Son of God? Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Herod sent him back. Pilate's wife said, hey, have nothing to do with this just man. I've suffered many things today because of him in a dream. Even the world today... Hatred against God. Here's a third grade quiz. Who made the world? God. Who created us? God. Yeah, you're seeing where this is going. Yeah, my heart is still beating. Why is that? God. Yeah. Oh no, it's because of the mechanics of evolution and the evolutionary scale and all of that. Nope, it's not either. It's because there is a creator God. How could we hate God? If he's given us so much. Oh, but pastor, you don't understand. My son died. My wife passed away. I, I, I owe back taxes. I've got... I've got gout. I've got a terrible, oh, I've just got problems. You don't understand. You are still 
created in the image of God for the purpose of glorifying God. How can we hate the one that created us? In the end, we need to remember this hatred actually was according to God's plan. Look at chapter 16, verse number 1. These things have I spoken to you that that you should not be offended. These shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. I shared uh, every Sunday morning while you're going back and getting your food, getting your plates filled and all of that, I try and share a story with the kiddos. In a couple of weeks, and this is going to sound silly, but this is where the Lord's got me focusing today. A couple of weeks ago, I shared the story, a story that I grew up with about a scorpion and a frog. Scorpion and a frog, scorpion's on the side of the river, and he needs to get across that river. And there's Mr. Frog. And the scorpion says, hey, I can't swim, frog. The frog says, ah, glad I'm not you. The scorpion says, no, come on, that's not very nice. I need to get across there. I've got to go see my grandma and my Aunt Brenda. I've got to, Aunt Brenda, where'd that come? I don't know. I've got to get across this river, frog. Won't you help me do that? No, 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 no. No, because you've got a stinger. And you got poison in that stinger. I'm not getting close to you. The scorpion says, come on now. Think about it. If I get on your back and we get in the middle of the river, am I going to sting you? We'll both die. I wouldn't do that. I'm not going to do that. Come on, frog. Won't you just help me get across the river? And the frog Let's his guard down. He says, you know what? Since the time I've been a tadpole, I've wanted to be a likable person. I've wanted to be a popular frog, waiting for the right friends. And this might be an opportunity for me to have a powerful friend in the world. You promise, Mr. Scorpion, you promise that you won't sting me. Oh, absolutely. I promise. What? Why would I sting you? I don't want to sting you. No, I'll keep, my, I'll keep my stinger up behind me and we'll be good. I'll just get on your back. You take me across. Three minutes, we're done. You promise, scorpion. I promise, frog. All right. And so the frog comes over, sidles up to the bank of the river. Scorpion climbs on. Don't sting me. Don't sting me. In the middle of the river, Scorpion stings the frog. Oh! Slowly but quickly, the poison courses through that little frog's body, and he can't, he's paralyzed, and he's just about to go under, and he asks the scorpion, Scorpion, you said you wouldn't do it. Why did you sting me? The scorpion, seeing his own death coming, he says, Because I'm a scorpion. It's what I do. That's a silly child story. But I think it illustrates what Jesus is telling us. Haters are going to hate. The world, if you get your heart broken tomorrow, by something happening in the world, again, don't wring your hands and hold your head and say, no, I can't believe, I can't believe that, that the world doesn't love me. The Bible says here, Jesus says, the world hateth you. It's shame on the world for hating us, for mistreating us, for fighting us the way we, they do. But it's shame on us for allowing them to hurt us. You see, that's the application here. That story of the scorpion and the frog, was it the scorpion's fault that they both died? In a sense, Yes. But the scorpion just did what the scorpion was supposed to do. It's the frog's fault. If you get your heart broken by mixing with the world and they turn on you and you realize that what a friend we have in Jesus, that's the only friend we've got. By linking up with God's people, 
by not being unequally yoked together with the world, if you realize that you've made, a, you've made a, an unequal yoke with the world and it hurts you, yes, shame on that individual. Shame on that boss or that co-worker or, or that husband, that wife, who is not built according to the standards of God's word yet, Lord willing. We should seek to share that with them. But yes, shame on them, but shame on you too. You put yourself in a position to be hurt by the world. Now, I'm not saying, okay, we're going to buy three years worth of groceries and a whole shed full of toilet paper, and let's all just live here and we won't have to deal with the world. No, again, we're commanded to go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in. Go and preach the gospel. This world's not our home, but it is our it is our spot for a little while. John 15, 17, we read it first. These things are commanded that you love one another. Haters are going to hate. It makes it so important that we, as children of God, we treat each other with love, respect, with admiration. If you come here ready to dish out more hate from the world, you're in the wrong spot. But by the same token, if you go running to the world thinking that you've got dear friends down at the, at the grill and bar or, or dear friends at the poker game or, or, or dear friends at the casino or, or, or a fellowship over some worldly, fleshly endeavor, shame on you. The world's going to hate. Boy, isn't that encouraging. Bronson's feverishly looking for an invitation hymn to go with this one. <laughs> Maybe this is the invitation. Lord, help us to love them even though they hate us. I don't want to send you out of here with, with shields and armor and, oh, you can't touch me. I'm the gingerbread. You can't get close to me. No. We've, we've got to get close to them. We've got to love them to Jesus. Isn't that fun? Is the servant greater than his master? Nope. He gave his back to the smiters. Here we are, church, with... Uh, in fact, my wife and I, Angela, watched a guy walk around our building the other day we think he was at the track meet, but he had a surveyor's wheel. And we thought, mm, is he measuring our field for the road? If we learn next week that the city is coming through here with Garfield and they're offering us $27 for our building and they don't care what we do, yeah, we'll throw a fit. Yeah, we'll make some noise. But I want you to remember, this world's not our home. And it shouldn't shock us when the world does what the world's going to do. We still got to love them. In the love that Jesus has given us. Let's figure out how to do that. Lord, we ask you to help us today. Through your word, through the, uh, through the instruction of your word, we've got a big job, dear God. And as a pastor and as a, as a child of yours, as a, as a Christian... As a co-laborer with these dear folks, I don't know how to love a world that just is, is geared and, and built on hating us. But for what little comfort it is, dear God, we know this, they hated you first. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to continue, Lord, to walk in wisdom toward them who are without, redeeming the time. The days are evil. The news today is filled with, with video proof of the fact that Iran is raining down ordinance on Israel at this very moment. Just a matter of time, Lord, before that conflict truly spreads to the world stage. And Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know who holds tomorrow. We thank you for that. I pray, Lord, that you'd help us as we, as we factor out what we need to do in this in this present world. 
You did command us to love one another, and Lord, if nothing else, bolster our love one for another today. But also build our hides and, Lord, insulate us from the hatred that we know we're going to get from the world. Because as you told the disciples in chapter 16, verse 33, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Help us, Lord, today to focus on these things. Bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me? Take your hymnals. Hymn number 300 will be our invitation hymn. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Some of you right now are considering the prospect of going back to work tomorrow and being around those people. And you're not looking forward to that. Just remember as you go, haters are going to hate. It's what they do. Some of you are thinking, oh, later today I'm going to be with this one or be with that one and they're not a child of the king. They're not saved. They're not born again. And they just don't, they don't understand why I go to church the way I do. Just understand this. Until they taste and see that the Lord is good, you're speaking a different language. We still got to love them. We still got a desire to share God, God's word with them. But let's not be shocked and amazed when they hate us. Let's sing that invitation hymn. If you need to come this morning, would you just do that, Brother Bronson? Let's sing it out. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Perch me One more verse. Let's sing it out today, all right? Let's sing that verse nice and strong. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. Oh, I'm weary. Help me, I pray. Surely is thine. Touch me. Bronson, I do want to encourage you, uh, look at the video screen if you had any question about the announcements. Uh, Brother Andy is still uh, doing announcements, and I know some of you just like talking to Brother Andy, so you can ask him about announcements all day long, but if he says, go look at the TV, just understand that uh, maybe he's done. So, uh, But uh, anyhow, um, we're going to release the cooking team at this time if they're not already gone back. Go back and continue, get that meal ready, if you would. We also have uh, some things coming up. We've got camp meeting, which is a big deal. And we're going to say something more about that every time we get together. Um, we'll be resetting the chairs. We'll be uh, putting our extra refrigerator in the, in the uh, fellowship hall. Uh, the, the Saturday prior to camp meeting, typically, men, we try and put our tent up, and it is a, it's not a Boy Scout pup tent kind of thing. It's an all hands on deck, and let's coax some football players to come help us kind of thing. So uh, any fellas who are able to do that with us on uh, that day prior, that would be a blessing. Um, and then also, we've got some flyers that are fixing to go out. We've been advertising it on our Facebook and all that kind of stuff. But if you want some flyers, we'll have those available in the next couple of weeks. If you want to take one of those and hang it up at the laundromat or the car wash or the wherever you want to put those. I try and get around town here ourselves and uh, 
uh, put those wherever I've got permission. And uh, let me just ask you that as well. Make sure you get permission before you do that, all right? Um, we don't want to be uh, pests in our community. But we do want the folks in town to know this is something they're welcome to come to as well. And every year we have people uh, just drive through the parking lot looking and rubbernecking and doing this number. Wow, what are all these cars about? Uh, we already, I do know already of conflict on both Tuesday night and Thursday night this year uh, with activities going to be taking place next door. So that'll be fun. Uh, there'll be a whole lot of cars here for camp meeting and a whole lot of cars next door for track meeting and all of that. So we'll just, uh, we'll just enjoy the Lord and say, wow, look at all the cars in our parking lot. So. Uh, any questions about camp meeting or anything you want to, to offer for that, or you, any things you want to do, uh, that would be a blessing. And uh, like I said, we're going to be planning more about that and talking more about that as the weeks come. So, All right, let's sing one more hymn, Brother Bronson, and then we'll be dismissed for lunch. I've said it plenty today, so let's sing hymn number 150. Hymn number 150, This World Is Not My Home. Hymn number 150. <laughs> in glory land we'll live eternally since on every hand are shouting victory it sounds the sweetest praise trip back from heaven's shore and i can't feel at home in this world anymore oh lord you know i have no friend like you in heaven's not my home then lord what will i do the angels beckon me from heaven's open door Watch the kiddos as they come.